Hello and welcome back to the final video in the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video, the 10th bonus video in the series, I conclude the series once and for all by running through how you can create your own user accounts with and without virtual mailboxes. The process of adding accounts with virtual mailboxes is a little convoluted as you may have noticed from the earlier videos. And though we've covered it in pieces already, what we're going to do here is go through it step by step in order, in order to learn the pattern of how you create user accounts. So I'll try and keep this one short and head straight over to my desktop where we're going to run through these processes one by one. But of course, before I do, I do have a Patreon account. And if you'd like to support my work or get early access to videos as much as two months early, please do check it out. And in a special case, as a small thanks to my patrons, in this video, I'm making available on Patreon the scripts I wrote these are bash scripts or shell scripts for creating new user accounts automatically if you're using virtual mailboxes. I shan't be covering how I write the scripts in this video as it's quite involved um, and it's shell scripting and really beyond this course. But if you're a patron and would like the scripts I wrote, you're welcome to them. OK, so let's get cracking by heading over to my desktop. OK, so here we are on my desktop. I'm going to rattle through this. I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi using my SSH alias Pi4. And firstly, we're going to cover how to add new users for the email server if we're not using virtual mailboxes. Now, for this, it's very easy. You may just have to create a new user account on the Linux system, and it very likely will do everything else you need to do for you. And I'll show that in just a minute. So for now, then, let's assume that we want to create a new user account for our email server and we're using the Linux user accounts for our email accounts, just like we did in the first part of the video series. That being the case, then I need to add a new user. I'm going to call my new user uh, Sam. So add user Sam. There we go. Give him a password, another password. Go through this. There we go. So let's just confirm that Sam exists by going into his home directory. Home Sam. There we go. Now, if your system is set up the same as mine, if you now type ls inside your user's home directory, you'll find that there's a mail dear directory waiting for you. So if you've got it set up like me, you are done. Your user account is created and you now have a Sam at followed by your domain ready to go. However, if you don't have mail dear, you'll just need to copy it over like we did earlier on in the video course and change the permissions. And I'll show you how to do that now. So let's just get this done quite quickly. Let's just check first that the mail dear directory skeleton is available on your system. So ls and I'm just going to go into the scale mail dear directory uh, to see if it's got something in there. I'll need to use sudo though because I don't own mail dear. OK, so I have the mail dear content on my system, so I know I can copy it over. So pretending now then that I didn't get the mail dear directory added automatically, I'm just going to add it very quickly as follows, just in case you don't have it. So it's quite straightforward. It's sudo copy minus r for recursive etc scale mail dear, which shouldn't come as a surprise, um, space and then home slash your user, Sam. So that will copy that directory over. I already have it, but I've just done it anyway, and it will have been overwritten as I use sudo. Now I'm going to change the permissions so that the user Sam owns these directories. So sudo chown for the ownership minus r for recursive. And then for me, it's Sam Sam owner and group and then home slash Sam slash mail dear. OK, that's fairly straightforward. Oh, I've spelt Sam wrong. There we go. OK. And the next thing I'm going to do is press up on the keyboard and replace Chown with Chmod and make sure that everything has 700 permissions. So all I've got to do is that and we are done. So I've done that very quickly because it's, there is a good chance you won't need to. But there are just those three lines needed to get the skeleton mail dear directory structure into the user's home directory. And now you are set with your new email account. If you didn't have the mail dear directory skeleton uh, structure available at etc scale, you'll need to go back to the first few videos in my series for how I use Dovecot to generate those. 
Okay, so that's it. Let's now move on to virtual users, which is a lot more convoluted. Firstly, with the virtual mailboxes, we need to add a new email account to the postfix vmaps file. This is where we associate the email address to the directory where the mail is stored. But, um, so <laughs> I'll explain in a minute that we need to hash it afterwards. I, I was going to mention it now, but I don't need to. So first I'm going to do sudo nano, which is my elevated permissions and the nano text editor slash etc slash postfix and then slash vmaps. Okay, so just to be clear, we're moving on now from the uh, email uh, account creation with um, Linux user accounts, and we're now moving on to virtual users. So first thing is to edit vmaps. Here we go. So hopefully this looks familiar. I just need to add my new user I want to add. Now I have added Sam already as a local user. So to avoid confusion, I'm going to add um, Tom, something nice and short. Tom at single hyphen entity.com. Uh, that's the email account or address. And then it's going to single hyphen entity.com, the directory, followed by Tom. So hopefully that all rings a bell. I'm going to save it. Now, if you recall, with um, the VMAPS uh, file, one has to hash it in order for Postfix to find it, because hashing it will turn it into a .db file which is what Postfix is looking for, and that's nice and easy to do. It's just sudo postmap etc postfix, and then you just go and find vmaps. There we go. Enter. So that's now hashed it. So that's nice and easy, really, to start with. We just edit vmaps, and then we hash it. Next, we need to actually create the directory, which we've just pointed the email account to. Now, this is nice and easy. We just use the mkdir command. So sudo mkdir minus p to make sure we create any nested folders. We don't actually need that here, but I, it's a, something that just falls off my fingers often. Um, now the uh, location was home, vmail, single hyphen entity for me. Yours will be different, of course, followed by the username, which for me was Tom. So if you remember, uh, vmail is the user who owns all of the virtual mailboxes. So that's why it's in home vmail. Single entity is the domain, of course, in my case, and Tom is my user. So there we go. I've created that directory, which the uh, vmaps file is pointing to. OK, so with that done, then we need to add the mail dear directory structure to this location so that the user has the required structure for their email account. So similarly to what we did a few minutes ago, we're going to copy it over, but this time because of how I have my server set up, we'll copy the content of the mail dear directory over, not the whole folder. So it'll look like this. sudo copy minus r for recursive, slash etc to go, go and get the skeleton mail dear directory. But here, I'm going to add a dot at the end to make sure that I copy the content of that directory, not the whole directory. And then of course, I'm going to go to my tom uh, directory here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it to save some time. Obviously, your uh, domain and username will be different. So that's now copied the content um, of MailDeer over to Tom's directory. And I just want to check that's the case by typing in ls and uh, followed by the directory. Of course, I don't own it. Vmail does. So let's sudo that. And there we go. The uh, contents of the MailDeer directory is where it should be probably worth doing just to check everything's worked as it should. OK, now we need to change the permissions on everything we've just done so that the user vmail owns everything inside the tom directory. So that's done very easily as sudo chmod, let's do chmod first, 700, slash home, slash vmail, slash single hyphen, entity.com for me, and I'll just uh, go to tom. So that's easy, sudo chmod 700 home vmail single hyphen entity.com for me and then tom, your domain and your username, of course, will be different. I'm going to also use minus r for recursive. I'm going to press up on the keyboard now and change this to chown and make sure that the owner is vmail. So chown vmail colon vmail. So make sure that vmail owns that directory. Okay. 
So with that done then, we're making good progress. Just to reiterate what we've done so far, we've first edited the postfix vmaps file, we've hashed it, we've then created the directory for the mail to live in, we've copied the mail dear directory content into it, and then as we've just done, we've changed the permissions on the mail dear directory so that the user vmail is the owner <clears throat> and the permissions are 700. So very convoluted and we're nearly there. There's one last thing for us to do. So the last stage is to give Dovecot some authentication credentials for the new user, because currently Dovecot won't be able to authenticate with this user. So to do that, we need to edit the Dovecot password file. So let's do that now, sudo nano etc dovecot slash password. Hopefully again, this rings some bells, uh, particularly when you see it. So what we need to do here is we need to add a new entry so that Tom has some credentials uh, for the email account. So tom at single hyphen entity.com colon. And if you recall, it goes email address colon password. And then there are six colons after that. Now we haven't generated the password yet. So what I'm going to do now that I've added <coughs> Tom's email address, I'm going to save it, go out again. And now I'm going to generate the password. And we do that with the Dovecot admin tool, Dove ADM space password, which is the actual utility we're using. Press enter. I'm now going to create the password so it doesn't have to be complex for me as I'm going to delete it. So there's the password I'm going to now copy. Make sure I've got it all. I'm going to go back into the password uh, file and I'm going to add it for Tom. I'm then going to add six colons, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to save and exit. <clears throat> Okay, so that's the new credential set up. We can now save and exit the editor, which we've done. And finally, as we've modified the Dovecot and Postfix setup, it's sensible that we restart the servers. So let's do that. We've done this many times before. sudo service postfix restart, uh, semicolon, and then I can do the second one afterwards, sudo service Dovecot restart. So the two commands in one line, press enter. And then I'm going to press up on the keyboard and I'm going to change the restart to uh, status just to check that they're both working as they should. There we go, press enter, and they're both running as they should, which is good. So that's it. That's how you create a new user. Now let's just check that Dovecot recognizes this new user correctly. <clears throat> Excuse me. I explained how to do this in one of the earlier videos <clears throat> as a standard check. Uh, and part of the debugging process for Postfix and Dovecot. So let's just check that Dovecot likes this user and this should show us that everything is configured as it should be. So dov adm followed by user, followed by our user that we have just created. <clears throat> so for me, that's tom at single hyphen entity.com. Oh, I missed out sudo. Okay, so when you do that, you get a bit of information. It tells you the owner. In this case, it's 5,000 for the user and the group, which is the uh, ID for vmail. And it tells us the user's home directory, which should be where you put it in the vmaps file. Um, and that's it, really. That's everything you need to do. So deep breath. Let's summarize. You do the following to create a new user with virtual mailboxes. You first edit the postfix vmap file. You hash it to make it available to postfix. You then create the directory for vmail to live in using the mkdir command. You copy the mail dear directory content into it, and then you change permissions so that the user vmail has ownership. You then create a new password using the dovecot password tool, and then you edit the dovecot password file with the email account and generated password. And at the end of all this, you just need to restart the server. Now, you're not alone in thinking that this is one convoluted process, and it is. And it's also, thankfully, easily automated if you spend the time to write a shell script. Now, for my personal uses, I do that and have done so. And as I mentioned uh, in the first part of this video, if 
you would like to and if you're a patron of mine you're welcome at to have access to my scripts that I wrote that basically do everything I've just described uh, in a single go. If you follow my video series through as well the scripts should work for you out of the box without having to make any changes. So just as a quick example of how easy we can do this if we write a shell script um, to incentivize you to do it or to have you come and see my script on my Patreon account. Let me create, <clears throat> excuse me, let me create a new user uh, using my script. So I'm going to type in sudo add user, sorry, I think I named it as email, add email account. And then all I've got to do is type in the email account. So I'll call it uh, cat at single hyphen entity.com. So all I'm doing is passing a argument to uh, the add email account shell script. I'm going to press enter and it's just going to ask me for a password. I'll keep it simple. And that's it. So all of that that we've done has been kind of squished into um, a single command. And I can equally delete the user uh, if I wish. But before we do, let's just check the users uh, all OK. So sudo dov adm user. And then we're going to go to cat at single hyphen entity dot com. Excellent. So you can see all of the shell script has done what it should do. And we've now got a user. So if I wanted to, I could now actually go and use that user straight away. So as I mentioned, we can also delete the user using the delete script I wrote. So sudo delete, um, delete, what was it? Delete email account. And then it's cats in this case at single hyphen entity.com. It'll ask me if I want to delete everything. Yes, I do. And that's done. OK, so hopefully you can see if you write your own script and hopefully this incentivizes you to do so, uh, you can make this process really nice and quick. Or if you'd like, come and grab mine from Patreon. Right then, finally, we reach the end of our bonus series journey. You are now able to host multiple domains on the same email um, server via the same IP address on a Raspberry Pi running through your home router completely for free. And you also should be meeting the strict criteria for your emails to be considered not spam. You're now able to add and remove users at your leisure, which means basically you're running a very flexible uh, email server ready to go. So my job is done. I hope you have found this entire series and this video useful. Uh, please do consider supporting me if you found it useful and please do check out my other video series because I will certainly be continuing to grow this channel with other great ways of using your Raspberry Pi at home. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much and I'll see you around.